up you guys welcome back to my channel thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's video if you guys are new here definitely definitely subscribe down below so you guys could be a part of my channel and that you can get notified when I post a new video okay so today's video is gonna be very interesting as you guys know I um, study social work in school I studied family and child services um, for my undergrad and I went on to get my master's in social work. So in 2020, I graduated with my master's in social work during the pandemic time. Um, and I did actually take my exam one time and I did not pass. And then I took it the second time and I passed, guys. Aren't you guys proud of me? So I'm basically gonna be giving you guys tips on how to pass your LSW exam, okay? I'm gonna be laying out all the things that I used to pass the exam the second time. And if you're watching this video for motivation too, just know that you're gonna pass it, okay? If I could do it, then you could do it because I'm not a test taker at all. Like I hate tests. Even in high school, like I really, I rarely studied for tests, but I always passed for some reason. But if you're looking at this video for motivation, you can definitely, definitely get it done. You just have to be consistent and really take the time to study. But I'm going to get into those tips in this video. So if you guys would like to know how I passed my LSW exam, just keep on watching. All right, guys. So like I said, I did fail the first time and it was very, very, very discouraging like I almost cried um, but I think that day I had like a lot going on I had some distractions that day too so it was a lot of factors that affected me on that test day so that brings me to my first tip is to have no distractions on that day like you have to be focused solely on the test tell your family members and people that you love that listen I'm taking this test I don't need any distractions for the day and you're gonna turn out just fine. Like I said, I failed the first time, unfortunately, but after I failed the first time, for some reason, that lit a fire on me to just pass my test the second time because as you guys know, this test is not cheap. It's about $230, yeah, $230, I believe, and it's not a cheap test, so you don't wanna keep taking it over and over again. So after failing the first time, that kinda lit a fire on me, like, Listen, I'm not about to pay $230 every time. I'm going to pass the test this time, literally. So you wanna make up in your mind that I'm going to pass my test this time and I'm gonna do everything to the best of my ability to pass this test, okay? So basically the second time around, I took it more seriously and I brought out the ropes and I actually studied for the test. The first time I really didn't study, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't study like that, but this second time I studied for the test. Okay. So the first thing that really helped me is um, watching videos, like YouTube videos online, um, like studying for studying for your LSW videos. You could just type that up on YouTube, but I'll have a link down below of the people and the videos that I watched. Um, I know there's, there's this one guy called, um, fill in the fill in the blanks something like that but his name is Phil and he does like a whole bunch of practice questions and he breaks it down for you um, I'll have his video link down below so you guys can subscribe to him if you guys need help um, learning how to answer certain questions on the exam but his video was a very very great help there was also this one video that was like a four hour long video that unfortunately got deleted off of YouTube for some reason, I'm not sure why. But in that video, there was this one thing that helped me like so immensely. And it was an acronym called Very Late. That's how I say it in my head, Very Late. But it's spelled out as V-E-R-E-L-A-T. The V stands for validate the client's feelings. The E stands for explore more and kind of dig deep into, you know, their situation. The R stands for refer. So that at that point you would refer them to any services that they need. The next E stands for educate. So you would educate your client 
on certain things that are you know available available for them like certain services certain things that they need to know um in order to better assist them in their therapeutic journey so um that's the e the l stands for lay a foundation for the client to um advocate for themselves so you're laying before you advocate for them you're laying down the foundation for them to advocate for themselves so say if um you're working with a student in a school you know they have misbehaviors in school first you would allow the client to advocate for themselves maybe go to the principal's office and explain themselves on you know why they had this certain behavior first before you advocate for the student themselves so you want to let the client advocate for themselves first just to show that they can do it for themselves and that they can be independent in that way a stands for advocate so you're, now you're actually advocating for the client and you're stepping in as a social worker and advocating for your clients. T stands for treat. So now you're, you're gonna be treating the, the client, you're gonna be diagnosing them for anything that they, you know, maybe showing signs for, so like ADHD, autism, and things like that. So now you're um, treating the, you're diagnosing the client and you're treating them. So that is gonna be your very last step. So these, basically go in order. So the first thing that you wanna do before anything is validate your client's feelings. So this is literally, this right here, this monomic, um, I think it's like a monomic acronym. I think that's what it's called. This right here is what made me pass my test. Like, because most of the questions on the LSW exam is what would you do first? Or what is the best thing to do in this scenario? And literally this acronym has helped me pass my exam. Like I'm literally giving you guys the tea because this literally helped me pass my exam. Um, yeah, so just definitely just rewind this video and write that acronym down and just use that for future reference for your test. The next thing that I use to pass my LSW exam is I downloaded an app called Behavioral Health App. You literally just type Behavioral Health App on your phone in your app in your app store and it should be like the first one that pops up so i'm gonna leave the link down below as well just in case you guys can't find it but i did download this behavioral health app and it is amazing it sends you questions every day it sets a reminder like take your you know take a question today answer a question today so you basically cannot miss it you're able to answer a question each and every day and you can also go in and do little tests like 10 questions or 20 questions or 30 questions you can kind of set it up to how you want it to be so this app definitely definitely helped because i was able to take a question or answer a question every single day and it kind of like improved my skills and improved my um answering abilities so it also has a subscription on it it's only 19.99 a month um and literally i only really studied hardcore for like a month so you're probably really just gonna need this for like a month or two. So $20 a month is not terrible compared to like other, you know, other subscriptions or things like that for this exam. So I would definitely, definitely recommend to pay that $20 and get the full experience of the app. The $20 allows you to have certain things such as a mock exam and um that's another thing it's really really important to take a mock exam just so you could be familiarized of how the exam is going to be and how long it's going to take so in this actual app you can take a mock exam it's four hours long and it's similar to the to the actual exam so i took this test um probably like a week before my exam and it definitely definitely helped me it you know opened my eyes to see how the test is gonna be and what to expect. Um, when I did this, I chose a quiet place with no one around me and I took the test for four hours straight. I took a little break, went to the bathroom and this kind of gave me an idea of how the test would be in real life. The thing that helped me is reading the actual LSW book. Um, I was fortunate to get the book sent to me by one of my, um, you know, college friends. So I had the book in my email sitting there for a while. I was not really reading it. Um, but, oh, I also have the physical book too. So I have both. Um, but yeah, like I'm not really like a reader like that. Like I would read if it's like interesting, but I'm not a reader like that. So 
Um, I basically had to push myself to kind of read this book. I did not read the whole thing, but I did read like halfway through, you know? So just try your best to like read as much as you can because it's a lot of good information in the book and it kind of sticks to your brain when you're reading it to yourself or you're reading it out loud. You kind of remember like, you know, in the exam, like if you get like a tricky question, you kind of remember like, oh, I remember this term because I read it in the book and um, you could choose kind of like the best answer for that question. Another tip that I have is when you're studying, try to study in four hour increments. So the test is four hours long, so you should try to study for at least three hours or maybe four hours, but you want to get yourself in the mood of being um, in, a, in a space for four hours and taking the test. So try to study in four hour increments because um, I would have to say when I first, when I took the test the first time, time was a barrier for me. Like I was running out of time and I actually got nervous. And you know, once you get nervous, you start, you know, pressing any answer, not any answer, but you know, like how you get nervous and you just get anxious about the test. And that's not good for your nerves on that day. So just make sure you study in four hour increments so you can get used and used to and adjusted to the time so that when you when you're there on that test day, four hours is like nothing to you. Like it's nothing. My final tip um, is to just familiarize yourself with the actual test place that you're going to because it just it just makes you feel more comfortable. It gives you less anxiety. Even if you have to like just look it up on Google just to see what it looks like, you know? Um, see if you need to find parking before you get there or if there's parking already available. So this last tip is basically about like the whole anxiety around the exam because it can be very anxious and nerve wracking, but you wanna make it as good of an experience as it is being that you're already taking a test you wanna have it as stress-free as possible. So if you can go to the place where you booked your exam and kind of drive around, see what it looks like, just so you know the route that you're gonna take, how it looks like and things like that. So you won't be as nervous because <laughs> it, sometimes it could be a lot. Cause the first place that I took it at, I took it at two different places. The first place I took it at, it was like, a busy city and I had to like pay I had to go in a parking space pay for parking I had to go to the security desk I had to go up an elevator it was like all this is like nerve-wracking nerve to me like you know but everybody's different um but the second place that I went to it was pretty easy the parking was free it was easy to walk in and it was just so much simpler so just be careful about where you you know try to do the test as well that's very important um you also want to pray on the day of your test you want to pray the week of your test you want to pay pray the day before your test <laughs> and you want to pray an hour before your test because when i tell you prayer literally put the icing on top of everything that i have told you all the tips that i've told you everything i told you in this video prayer put the icing on top of everything. I prayed before I went to before I went to take the exam. I asked my mom to pray. I asked my boyfriend to pray for me. I asked my friends to pray for me. Like everybody was praying for me on this exam day. You guys hear me? And um I literally passed my exam by two points, guys. Two points. And I just really, really, really thank God. I have to end this video with thanking God because if it wasn't for God, I would not have passed this test. God literally put the icing on the cake and he allowed me to pass my exam. And now I am a licensed social worker, all thanks to him. And yeah, guys, that is my last, my actual last tip is to pray before you go and take this exam. Yeah, guys, that's really it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed all my tips and tricks on how to pass your LSW exam. If you're watching this video and you're waiting to take your exam, I wish you the best of luck. And yeah, guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Mm.